Welcome to today's lecture on electrical measurement. Today's topic of discussion is galvanometer. As part of discussion, we will talk about the principles of galvanometer, the types of galvanometer, what is the construction mechanism of moving coil galvanometer, galvanometer conversion into ammeter and voltmeter, compression between a galvanometer and an ammeter. Then we will talk about ballistic, vibrational, tangent, aesthetic, and mirror galvanometers. A galvanometer is an electromechanical device used in detection and measurement of small voltage and current. Galvanometer works as an actuator producing a rotary deflection responding to current flowing through coil in presence of magnetic field. It is used in bridge circuits and potentiometer circuits and indicate zero current and zero deflection. Galvanometers are elementarily PMMC devices consisting of a light coil and permanent magnet arrangement. The guiding principle of operation of a galvanometer is that any current containing coil positioned in between a magnetic flux experiences torque as given by the Faraday's laws of electromagnetism. The angle of deflection of the coil is due to and proportional to the magnitude of the current flowing through the circuit. The galvanometer was developed in the early 18th century. The Arsenal or Western galvanometer, they come under moving coil galvanometer. Then there is tangent galvanometer, aesthetic galvanometer, mirror galvanometer, ballistic and vibrational galvanometer. The moving coil galvanometer are of two types, suspended coil galvanometer and pivoted coil or waist-drawn galvanometer. A moving coil galvanometer contains a rectangular metallic frame wrapped with insulated fine copper wire that is free to rotate about a fixed vertical axis of symmetry between the magnetic poles. A phosphor bronze strip is connected to a movable torsion head in a uniform magnetic field. A low reluctance cylindrical soft iron core is placed inside the coil aimed at improving the magnetic flux strength. High conductivity and low value of torsional constant are both desirable and essential properties of the material of the coil. The torsion head controls the position of the coil and adjusts for the zero setting. The coil is suspended by a flat ribbon made of copper or gold wire in the upper portion and a lower suspension wire of negligible torque effect. Here we see the schematic construction of a moving coil galvanometer. We see the two magnetic poles in between which the coil is suspended through the upper suspension and the lower suspension. N represents the number of coil turns, L is the length of the vertical side of the coil, D is the width of the coil, I is the current flowing through the moving coil, B is the magnetic flux density, C is the spring constant, A is the coil cross section area that is product of L and D. Theta is the final steady state deflection of coil. TD and TR denote the deflecting torque and the restoring torque. For final steady state deflection, TD should be equal to TR, that is NBAI equal to K theta. Thus, theta is proportional to I. Galvanometer sensitivity is the ratio of change in coil deflection theta to the change in coil current and coil voltage measured in current sensitivity and voltage sensitivity respectively. The current sensitivity is given as theta by I which is equal to NBA by C and the voltage sensitivity is given as theta by V which is NBA by V dot C whole into I. Thus theta by V equal to NBA by C whole into I by V that is equal to NBA by C whole into 1 by R. Thus we see that voltage sensitivity is proportional to current sensitivity if the value of R is constant. The factors that affect galvanometer sensitivity are the number of coil turns N, coil area A, magnetic field strength B and the coupled magnitude by the twist given as C by NAB. C being the torsional constant or the spring constant. The major advantages of a moving coil galvanometer are it offers high sensitivity, it is not affected by stray magnetism, 
it offers high talk to weight ratio it offers high accuracy and reliability the disadvantages are it is only able to measure dc current aging wear and tear affect the spring arrangement and the permanent magnet and this induce error in the system the risk of damage is high due to overloading a galvanometer can very easily be converted into a voltmeter by connecting a high value resistance in series with the circuit a voltmeter range is a function of the resistance value connected in series with the circuit and the expression is given as v equal to rg ig plus rig where rg is the galvanometer resistance ig is the current flowing through the galvanometer and r is the high value resistance connected to the circuit Voltmeters are always connected in parallel with the circuit under measurement. Just like a voltmeter, a galvanometer can very easily be converted into an ammeter too. By connecting a low value resistance in parallel that is shunt with the circuit. The parallel or shunt resistance value is chosen based on the desired range of ammeter. Numerically it is given as Rg Ig equal to I minus Ig whole into Rs where rs is the value of the shunt resistance i is the total current flowing through the circuit the ammeters are always connected in series with the circuit under measurement as shown in the figure below the figure below shows how a galvanometer can operate as a voltmeter an ohmmeter and an ammeter the voltmeter is a high resistance device so that it does not draw appreciable current from the circuit a series resistor limits the current the ohmmeter has a voltage source to drive a small current through the external resistance to be measured it contains a calibrated resistor the ammeter has a parallel resistor of very small value to shunt most of the current away from the sensitive current measuring element it must carry the total current of the circuit to be measured without appreciable voltage drop Although a galvanometer can be very easily converted into an ammeter, but still there are few differences between a galvanometer and an ammeter. The table below highlights the differences between a galvanometer and an ammeter. By definition, detection of magnitude and direction of current is possible with galvanometer, while ammeter can only determine the magnitude of current. Galvanometer are a mechanical type of device. by ammeters can be both mechanical or electronic the magnetic field is absolutely necessary for galvanometer and it is optional for ammeters accuracy is less for galvanometer than compared to ammeters galvanometers can only be used for dc measurement while ammeters can be used for ac and dc both the sensitivity is higher for galvanometer than that of ammeters application wise Galvanometers are used in bridge and potentiometer circuits. Ammeters can be used in any electrical circuit. Ballistic galvanometer is a specific galvanometer type that is used to estimate the quantity of charge flowing and discharging through it. It is an integral type equipment unlike other current measuring galvanometers. The moving parts of the device have large moment of inertia giving it a longer period of oscillation. the greater the moment of inertia the more will be the opposition to the angular movement which translates to larger oscillations the coil deflection is proportional to the charge passing through it and as charges flow through the coil picks up the impulse the device measures the majority of the charge passing through it instead of the current it can be both of moving coil type and moving magnet type a ballistic galvanometer is the extension of a mirror galvanometer here we see the constructional detail of a ballistic galvanometer it comprises a copper wire wound on a non conducting frame the phosphor bronze wire suspends the coil between the magnetic polarities the iron core is placed within the coil in order to increase the magnetic flux the lower end of the coil is connected with the spring which provides the restoring torque The construction is pretty very similar to that of a moving coil galvanometer with all the terms absolutely equal 
the only additional term here is omega which is the angular velocity. The current flow for a small duration of time is given as td dt equal to n i b a dt. Current flowing through the coil for t seconds is given as integration 0 to t td dt equals to n b a integration 0 to t i dt which solves as n b a q. The angular momentum of the coil is equal to the force acting on the coil. Angular momentum L omega is therefore equal to n b a q. The kinetic energy K of the deflecting coil is equal to the restoring torque with C spin constant. K equal to TR, therefore half L omega square equal to half C theta square. Thus, we get L omega square equal to C theta square. The period of oscillation of the coil is given as T equal to 2 pi root of L by C. Solving, we get C T square by 4 pi square is equal to L or C square T square theta square by 4 pi square is equal to L square omega square. Solving, we get ct by nba 2 pi whole into theta thus the charge q is proportional to the deflection theta a vibrational galvanometer is a type of mirror galvanometer with a coil suspended in the gap of a magnet or with a permanent magnet suspended in the field of an electromagnet the natural oscillation frequency of the moving parts is carefully tuned to a specific frequency. The frequency depends on the mass of the moving element and therefore high frequency vibration galvanometers are small with light coils and mirrors. The galvanometer is tuned by adjusting the tension of the suspension spring. The sharp resonance of the vibration galvanometer makes it highly sensitive to changes in the measured current frequency. This type of device is suitable therefore for both detecting AC current within the natural frequency as well as DC. The commonly set oscillation frequency is 50 to 60 Hz and it can be as high as 1 kHz. The oscillation frequency of the moving element becomes equal to the frequency of the measured current and the deflection is amplified. There are two types of vibrational galvanometer moving iron or coil type and moving magnet type. In the moving iron type, the coil is suspended between the poles of the permanent magnet, as shown in the figure below. In the moving magnet type, a small piece of magnet is suspended between the poles of the two permanent magnet. Thus, the difference is. In moving iron, the coil is suspended in between the magnets and the moving magnet type, another small piece of magnet is suspended between the polarities of permanent magnets. If I be the current passing through the coil of a vibrational galvanometer, then small i is given as I m sin omega t. The deflecting torque Td is given by the same formula n b a i which is equal to gi equal to i m sin omega t. The equation of motion is given as tj plus td plus tr all equals to td that is the deflecting torque or j d square theta by dt2 plus d d theta by dt plus k theta equals to g i m sin omega t where G is the displacement constant, J is the constant of inertia, capital D is the damping constant and capital K is the control constant. In 1834, Johann Jacob Navender described and developed the tangent galvanometer. A tangent galvanometer is used for measuring current using a compass needle to compare the generated magnetic field due to current flow to the arts magnetic field. Tangent law of magnetism states that the tangent of the angle of a compass needle is proportional to the ratio of the strengths of the two perpendicular fields. 
It comprises a coil of insulated copper wire on a circular non-magnetic frame. The frame is mounted vertically on a horizontal base with leveling screws. The coil is free to rotate on a vertical axis passing through its center. A compass box is mounted horizontally at the center of the circular scale consisting of a tiny yet powerful magnetic needle pivoted at the center of the coil. The magnetic needle is free to rotate in the horizontal plane. The constructional detail of a tangent galvanometer is shown in the two figures given below. In operation, the equipment is rotated until the earth's magnetic field is parallel with the plane of the coil. The unknown current is now applied to the coil. This creates a second magnetic field on the axis of the coil perpendicular to the earth's field. The compass needle responds to the vector sum of the two fields and deflects to an angle equal to the tangent of the ratio of the two fields. The current is calculated by measuring the deflection angle. Coil magnetic field B is given as mu naught n by 2r into i and the deflection angle theta is given as tan inverse B by BH. From tangent law, B equal to BH tan theta. Thus, we get I equals 2R BH by mu naught N whole into tan theta, which equals to K dot tan theta, where K is known as the reduction factor given as 2R BH by mu naught N. Aesthetic galvanometer, now almost obsolete, was developed in 1825 by Leopoldi Novelli. Unlike tangent galvanometer, aesthetic galvanometer does not use earth's magnetic field for measurement and therefore it need not be oriented with respect to the earth's magnetic field. It consists of two magnetized needles parallel to each other but with the reverse magnetic polarities as shown in the figure. The needles are suspended by single silk thread. The lower needle is inside a vertical current sensing wire coil. The lower needle deflects due to the current flow in the magnetic field. The second or the upper needle cancels the dipole moment of the first one. Therefore, the suspended armature has no net magnetic dipole moment. Hence, it is not affected by Earth's magnetic field. The rotation of the needle is opposed by the torsional elasticity of the thread. In 1826, Johann Christian Podendorf developed the mirror galvanometer. Mirror galvanometer is a modification where a lightweight mirror substitutes the pointer to achieve higher sensitivity and better resolution. This galvanometer can measure feeble current of the order of 10 raised to minus 9 ampere. It consists of horizontally placed magnets suspended from fine fiber inside a vertical coil of wire with a mirror attached to the magnets. The beam of light reflected from the mirror falls on a graduated scale acting as a massless pointer. The otherwise principle of operation is similar to that of a moving coil galvanometer. In present era, high speed mirror galvanometers are employed in leisure light shows to produce different geometrical patterns. Both ballistic and vibrational galvanometers are mirror type galvanometers. For further detailed reading, the interested readers can go through the following references to enhance their knowledge about galvanometers. Thank you.